Do you love waterfalls, but struggle with how to paint them? We're going to look at that in today's video as we check out how I painted part of this painting. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Angela. I'm the artist behind Clark Fine Art, and I'm going to grab my supplies and let's get started. So we're going to practice making realistic looking waterfall. We're going to start by creating the dark blue and then the more blue. So this is phthalo blue and black. Mars black. Okay. To begin, we mix our fatal blue and our Mars black to make a nice, rich, deep blue. I've got that just touch, just touch the tip of my bristles in the water. So it just starts to make the paint disperse. That's going to give me just enough water to thin my paint down. <clears throat> And paint the base for my waterfall. So I'm going to do strokes, think of my waterfall coming down, and paint that base in there. What this is, is the deep shadow part of my waterfall. So I want to get that base. Once I have a base, I'm just going to pull it out as it hits the bottom. I'm working on watercolor paper, so I'm getting a little bit more water just so that I can make that acrylic paint flow. Okay. So now I have the base of my waterfall. Next thing I'm going to want to do is take a little bit of white paint and mix it in with my blue that was left on my palette. This is just going to lighten that color up a little bit. I want that to be just a little darker. So I'm going to grab a little bit more blue, a little bit more black. Right now, I'm just looking for a color that's just a little lighter than what I had before. Now, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for this. So that was my number 13 flat brush with my Art Echo brushes. Now I'm going to switch to my number 8 flat brush, also in the Art Echo brush. I'm going to scoop up some of that paint so that the load on my brush, you can see that. I just want to focus on my hand. It's just up here on the tip. Okay, this is where I want most of my paint to be. So I'm going to have, this is a number six, it's just a really stiff like hog bristle brush. And I'm going to scoop up that paint. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to lay it in around the top. I'm going to take this stiff brush and I'm going to pull it downwards. What this is going to do is start to make, you'll see, a streaky line. And I'm going to need a bit more paint to do this. So we're going to mix up some more. It's my, take my dark blue again. Grab be too much white. Grab a little bit of white, bring that in. Okay, that's a brighter blue, so I don't have enough black in it. Grab some more black. There we go. Now I'm getting close to what I just had before. Grab a little bit of water. I just want to make my paint really flow. 
I'm still in a little bit more black. Just want to really desaturate that color. And then bring some of the white back in. Okay. So now I'm going to really lay that color on there. I want it kind of thick at the top. I want a nice thick layer of paint and along the top of the waterfall because I need that paint to be there so that when I grab my brush and I'm barely touching, I pull down, I get that nice streaky and I have enough paint that it'll make it down the waterfall. Now I can do this multiple times till I get the result I'm looking for. Add in more paint. <clears throat> Then pull it in. You can do this with the same brush, uh, but you won't get as streaky. You won't get as much of a streaky effect. So once I pull this down, I'm going to want to lighten this color again, grabbing more white, mixing that in. Now I want an even lighter color. And this time, I'm going to really start to see this show up. I don't want to go too light. And I don't mind if all my colors, you see I have, a, my colors are not completely blended here. I, that doesn't bother me. I don't mind that. I need to get this paint out of my brush because I really want the paint to be on the, loaded onto the tip of my brush. Okay. I'm going to come back in and I'm barely touching as I drag so that it just really leaves a good deposit of that paint on there. And that paint will be nice and thick on my canvas or my paper. And then again, I'm gonna very lightly pull that down and you'll see I start to get these nice streaky and textured effects in here. That's what I'm looking for. I don't mind if it's skipped around like this. I don't mind that I see a lot of the dark coming through. I want that. That's actually going to make this look better in the end. So now yet again, I'm going to come back through, grab some more white, lighten my color up again. And I'm going to repeat this process. And every time I repeat the process, I'm allowing it to have the darker colors that are underneath continuously show through in areas. So you'll get some areas that have each of those other colors are still showing through. Okay, I don't want to pull too much or I'm going to blend and this is all going to look like one solid color. I don't want that. I want to be able to see all the multiple colors that I put down, the different values that I put down. I want to see those kind of build on each other. So again, I grab more white, make it even lighter. I grab that color and I'm working wet over wet. So because I'm not drying these in between, if I do a lot of brush strokes, I'm going to blend this on my canvas or on my paper. And I don't want to do that. So I just want to pull down one time every time I lighten my colors. And you'll see I'm really starting to get a variety of values that are showing through here. <clears throat> now, again, at this point, this is still the underpainting of my waterfall. Pulling that color down through. So this is still that underpainting. And we keep going. Make it brighter again. You'll see my value just keeps getting lighter and lighter each time. And it's all about the layers. This will dry and some will show through. And I'm just laying, I'm actually dabbing these blob, literally blobs of paint at the top of my waterfall because I need to have enough paint there so that when I grab my stiff brush and my stiff brush, if I tap this brush out on my 
on my palette. I'm really going to get those bristles you see there. They're really splayed out. So when I grab that paint, only some bristles are touching, and I can really get a nice streaky effect. And it's going to look like water spilling over the top. Grab more white. Really lighten this up. Now I have lots of paint on my brush. I'm just going to kind of pull that off of my palette, get that paint out of my brush. I really want to mix this down to a lighter much brighter blue now. But again, we're not doing white yet. The white is going to be the highlight at the very end that we're going to do. Okay, so again, I've got that at the top. And I'm just imagining the water spilling down, spilling down. You'll see it kind of skips around. There it's skipped over, picked back up here. That's, I, I don't mind that at all. I like that. Now, I've still got a lot of that darker blue in, in, my, in my brush you see up there near the ferrule. I'm gonna rinse all of that out. I'm gonna give this a really good scrub. I have paint puck in the bottom of my water cup. I'm scrubbing all that dark color out. Okay. Now, if I take a napkin or a tissue, see there's still some blue in there. Really clean that out. There we go. That's almost completely clean. So now I can grab some white, and now I'm going to really get a lighter blue. But again, this is not, let me slide that so you can see. This is not a pure white. This is a very, very pale blue. So I'm going to come back in on top. I don't mind that down here, I'm seeing all the texture of the paper. I'm working on the watercolor paper right now. But if I was seeing the texture of my canvas or my paper, I don't mind this. This is okay. So now at this point, once I get that, oops, once I get that white there, or excuse me, that light blue there, I just want it more in this area. And I don't care if my lines are get a little wavy, right? That's the water's going to flow. There might be something underneath there that sends the water in a different direction. So this is okay. Don't worry about that. Now, again, like I said, you could use the brush, but if I use this brush and I put the color up here, just see the difference. If I pull, see, I get a much thicker line. So you can do it that way, but by using a really stiff brush, it's just going to look like much more streaks of water flowing down. Okay, now I need to let this dry. I'm just going to scrub up some of that paint. Let it, looks like it's cascading into that pool below. And now I want to take some white. So I'm going to take some white. Let me move my palette again so that you can see better. I'm going to take some white here and I'm going to thin that down a little bit. 
I want this white to be uh, almost like the consistency of paint that you could splatter with. Um, thicker, just a little bit thicker than milk. So now I can take this white and I'm going to go back to, because I want to go back to our waterfall. So I can take my, I've got a number six stiff brush. Any old brush that works, that is kind of splayed out like this is going to be great for this technique. Now, some people also will use a fan brush for this technique. Some people will use a rake brush where the rake brush has um, bristles, but then some bristles will be missing and it'll, so it looks like a rake. They'll have bristles that stick long, shorter bristles, longer bristles, like that. And that will allow them to do multiple strokes at once. I just like the look that this gives in the waterfall. So this is only one way of doing this. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm putting plenty of paint at the top of my waterfall here. Right? So I have plenty of white paint up there. Now I'm going to take my brush and pull down and you'll see I thought I had plenty of paint up there, but I didn't get very far with that. So this time I'm going to go back in, I'm going to do it again with that white paint. And I don't have to do the whole thing at once, put some on that side. I'm very lightly pulling. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. If you see, um, there's not a lot of pressure. I'm not, I'm, let me grab a clean brush. I am not pressing down. I'm not really pressing into my painting. I'm just gently, just enough to start to bend those bristles. That's how much pressure I'm using. So I hope that helps. I'm just going to keep building this up. See, and there really, it skipped a little bit, picked up again further down, and that's okay. It's just going to look more natural. And now I'm going to get this a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. Just mixing a little more white paint into what I already had over here. Thicken that up a little bit too much brush, too much paint up into my brush. And I really want the paint to be loaded on the end of my brush. So you see there, I have the load is here and it's not further up my bristles so that I can kind of dab on these globs of that white paint and then pull them down. I'm going slightly above where it is and pulling through it. Slightly above where it is, pulling through it. Okay, this still is pulling a little bit of that blue color through, so it wasn't 100% dry. That's okay, because I will just let it dry more and then come back again and get my final whitest highlights afterwards. So now going back to my waterfall again, coming in on the top. Now another thing that I can do, I can do my brush on its side and just pull down some streaks if I wanted to do it that way. But I really, really like, I, I just like the effect that I get when I use that stiff brush. So that, again, that's the way that I do it. That's the way that it works best for me. I encourage you to try different things. Now here, I just grabbed some of that white paint with my stiff brush, and now I'm just pulling, right? So there's another way that you can do it versus loading the paint up here and pulling through. I could also load this brush and pull that through. But sometimes you'll tend to get, it'll get thicker and you can't so, see so much of what's underneath. So again, putting 
putting that paint at the top. Right, I'm just dabbing it on there so I have that nice thick layer. It's really sticking up from the paper. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's really sticking up from the paper. And then I'm going to just barely touch, pull down, pull down. And now I start to really get some white coming through. But now down here, what I'm going to do is I want to create this mist at the bottom. So that's going to be the next step to create that mist at the bottom. Again, I'm clean, just cleaning that paint out of this brush so it won't dry in there. I'm going to take my white paint. I want it thinned down for this. It's going to become a lot more transparent. And yet again, I'm going to make a mess of my fingers. Because at the very bottom, so where the water is going, where the water that's falling is going to hit the water that's pooling at the base, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this little bit. You see, I'm just kind of swirling and making circular motions, right, with my brush. But I don't want it all just to sit like that. I want it to be like mist. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to rub over that paint. And that's really, and this works so much better than it's working right here on a canvas. So I just dip my finger in the water. Got some water. And I'm just kind of rubbing that area. Now that blended with stuff that was underneath. And it got darker. And that's okay. Because, again... We're going to layer up. So you'll see, you see the water that's coming down. I can see the streaks. And now I'm going to start to get this mist. And again, this technique worked much better for me on a canvas. And it probably would have worked just fine had I got my hair dryer and dried this completely in between. So I'm going to dry this now. Because when I come back in, I want everything that's here right now to be dry. And in fact, I think I want to get some of this. And I'm just going over this. This is just clean water on my brush. And what I'm doing is I'm actually blending this. And this underlayer is getting a little darker. And I'm going to keep myself a nice line here. I'm going to dry this and then we will come back and we will go from there. Okay, so this is all dry. And now, once again, I'm going to grab some more white paint. that down just slightly all right I'm gonna do that process one more time get the white to the top I'm gonna take a nice stiff brush that one's really one's so kind of dry. I'm going to pull that down. There we go. I'm just catching the edge of my waterfall. Okay. Again, you can pull some, with, I've got my brush on its side, and I'm just pulling some streaks down further. Just a few. All right. I can still see through it. I can still see some of those darker colors. Now, I want to have my paint nice and thin for this part. Because I'm going to go for my mist. And I'm going to dab this in. And I'm just going to kind of rub that with my finger to blend that around. And give it that misty water spraying 
and I'm going to do it again. Okay. I'm going to rub that around. I'm letting it show through. Some areas are darker than others. That's fine. Do it again. More dabs. And I'm touching this gent more and more gently, less and less pressure each time I do that, so that I leave. I'm building up my values, I'm getting brighter and brighter. Um, by touching it less, I am not pushing as much of the paint in to the paper or into the canvas. And I'm just kind of letting it set there. Basically, I'm just taking the, so that it doesn't look like a big glob. Um, and, and it's just kind of making that nice, soft, subtle. You're not seeing my brush stroke. Okay, and so then I think like here comes this and I just, okay, the water just kind of ripples out. So it hits and that pressure of the water forcing down into that pool of water is going to cause little waves and ripples to come at me. So I'll just kind of put a couple of those in there. So there you have a nice, simple waterfall effect. Now I can, if I wanted to, I could spray um, some little bit of splatter of white on there and and just really get like, yeah, I'm going to use my, I'm gonna use my small stiff brush so that I have more control. I'm using my number two um, stiff hog bristle brush really want this paint to be, this white paint to be thinned. There we go. Because I want to make sure that if I flick, I'm getting some little sparkles of white. And I can come in here and flick that on there and get sprays of water. Now, I can see that it has come out into my painting here. I'm not worried about that. I don't have anything there yet. Um, this was really just to demonstrate a way to create the waterfall. And if you've enjoyed this video or got value out of it, I do hope you'll take a moment and just give me a thumbs up and click that like button. YouTube does reward interaction and more people will see my videos the more people interact with them. And if you did like it, drop me a comment below. I love to see what everybody has to say. I do read all the comments and try to take time to respond to ones that need replying to. And for the rest of this, I thought I just wanted to show you the techniques for the waterfall, but I was going to let it continue because I did carry on with this painting. So if you wanted the quick waterfall or the brief waterfall tutorial, that real time part of the painting is done. But here I just kept going. I couldn't stop. I didn't want to just have, uh, you know, the partial and I was basically I was playing. I was having a good time and I just wanted to keep going. So I figured I would just share that with you and you could see what I did with that waterfall and where it went to from here. So I just added in, first I started with some trees and really I, I knew I went a little ahead of myself because I didn't put the background in. So I stopped, dried those and put on my background and I wanted to have like a nice night theme. So here I'm starting to lay in what will be a glow for my moon and I'm just taking a little bit of that watered down white and put it on top of the blue. I really want it to see through. So again, multiple layers and just blending that out. I let it dry and keep coming back and you'll see that the moon itself just gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And then the original that you put down just becomes this nice glow around the moon, which I'll then have reflect in my water before I'm finished. So I just kept going through and I'm trying to redefine define the edges of where the pool of this water is going to be. So I'm going to spread that out. And then of course, right now it looks like my waterfall is falling out of the sky. So I will have to add something around that to anchor the water too, unless it has just randomly started flowing right out of the clouds. I don't know. Where's this waterfall coming from? We have to define that. So again, normally if I was creating this painting, I would have defined that in the very beginning before I put these rocks in and before I created all of my waterfall. 
But when I was doing this, I was just doing a tutorial um, for showing how to do texture on rocks and this one here for how to create the waterfall. So now you'll see I'm just going to kind of lay in some greenery back there and define the edges of the land that's to the left and right of my water. And I'm just going to keep throwing that in. That's just some dark green. Uh, I find uh, a lot of times I get a really nice deep green when I just mix black and yellow. I really like the dark green that I get when I do that. So throwing some leaves on my trees, then I'm blending in a little more yellow and brightening that color up so I can come back again. And now I'm adding another tone to give more uh, depth and dimension to the foliage. And you'll see I'm going to do that a couple times, adding in some more, lightening it up again, coming in and just stippling in more color on the greenery and adding some around my rocks. And I'm just going to keep going. And now I'm doing this just on the edges that are towards the moon because where the moon would be casting uh, highlights on those things, I want to make sure that I add more light into that part of the painting. So just continuing to come back on the right side of the objects in the left part of my painting and on the left side of the objects that are in the right side of my painting. Just defining some shrubbery there. I'm just going to keep going through and adding little bits. And then I'm going to come back through and I got carried away with the white on my waterfall and you really can't see all my dark layers underneath. And if this happens to you, that's okay, right? We're working in acrylic paint. What do we do? We just let it dry and then we'll come back and you'll see me do that. We'll just come back and throw in some darker areas. If you take the time and paint a waterfall with this technique, please do share it with me and tag me in it. If you're on Facebook, although I'm trying to move away from Facebook, I do a lot more in MeWe and you can find me at Clark Fine Art over there on MeWe, um, as well as my Clark Fine Art group on Facebook or my Clark Fine Art page. You can also, I'm redoing my website, which is clarkfineart.org. And you can even contact me right through there. But if you share it on social media, on Instagram, I am at Clark underscore fine art and at Clark fine art everywhere else. So here I was just adding in some darker tones to some of that foliage and bringing some of the branches up into extending the branches through some of the um, tree to help separate the different sections. And now I'm just putting in the banks of the water where this water pools out to the edge. And again, this was just on a watercolor paper. Sometimes if I'm just messing around, I love to just grab a piece of watercolor paper and have a go. You don't have to have canvas. If you can't afford to buy a bunch of canvases, buy some watercolor paper. And honestly, you can gesso that paper or you can paint down some white paint, let it dry, and then come back on top of it. Once you have that first layer of acrylic on there, it really gets easier and easier to paint on with every layer. I tape it. You see, I have it taped down here. I tape it down so it doesn't warp or buckle. And I even did a video on using acrylics like watercolor, and I'll put a link to that here. So you can check that out if you'd like to. And I've been enjoying it. So do you paint with acrylic on watercolor paper? Drop me a comment and let me know. I'm curious. And you'll see there I added some highlights and I kept them to the center so it looked like the moon was reflecting. And I'm adding more white for the splash of the water. But as I come through, I'm like, this is really, really bright. And I've lost a lot of the depth in my waterfall. I wanted nice glow from the moon, but I overworked it a bit and got a little carried away. So here you'll see, I'm just starting to mix up some of the darker colors and I'm going to come back through. There's some more splatters and I come back through and bring some of the darker areas back in and it's going to just add so much more dimension to the water coming over the fall. So if you've really, if you've enjoyed this one and you'd like to see it 
in real time, drop me a comment and let me know because I have thought about putting this as a real time full length video um, over on my Patreon. So if you are, if you are curious and, and this is something you'd like to see, please do drop me a comment and let me know. So here I'm just adding more highlight in my tree and keeping it again on the right side of the trees that are on the left side of my painting and on the left side of my trees that are on the right side of my painting. So all of the sides of the objects that are closest to the moon, keep your highlights in that area because the moon is my light source. And I really liked the way the sky came out on this one. This was one of my, definitely one of my favorite uh, quick, it didn't take me a long time to paint this, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And that's the key, right? Just sit down and have fun, experiment, play with it. If you don't like the way something turns out, let it dry, paint back over it. Um, just going in and I'm adding my rocks. I wanted more dimension. So I'm coming back in and I'm putting in more darks. My darks weren't dark enough. I really needed them to stand out more so that my rocks had more dimension to them. So don't be afraid to experiment with it. Play, just play with the color. Acrylic is the most, in my opinion, acrylic is the most forgiving medium. We can let it dry, paint over it, and it just the mistake disappears. But we learn so much from that. So now I'm going to come back in and again, I don't feel I have enough dark with my water. Everything there is too bright. So I'm going to darken that up a bit and I'm just coming back in and I'm looking for areas where I can see that there's already some shadow that is showing through and I'm just going to emphasize that. You can see by adding in those dark colors, that water really starts to have more dimension to it. So just keep going through and keep adjusting it until you get to something that you like. And then when you do have what you like, you know, just stop. But if you're, if you're not satisfied with it yet, don't be afraid to keep going. And you'll see as those darks start to come in, it just so much more dimension to that water. So it's really important. You've got to make sure that you have the darks. I think Bob Ross used to say, you can't have dark without light. You can't have light without dark. They add to each other. Uh, Lisa over at Lockery Fine Art she's always saying, you know, make sure your dark's dark enough, your light's light enough. And it's just so true. You have to make sure, don't be afraid to go dark. Don't be afraid to have that contrast there. It really looks great in your paintings. So there you have it, guys. This is wrapping up. I hope you enjoyed this. If you stuck around to see where I went with this one, thanks for spending the extra time with me. Again, if you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button, share it, drop me a comment. YouTube rewards that interaction. I am a young channel and I am trying to grow. So I appreciate your help in sharing my content and getting it out there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, if you'd paint it, if you do this one, please share it and tag me with it because I would love to see your work. Stay safe, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one.